In this PowerPoint today, I'm going to go through some of the various things that we're going to look at when we're judging the Western Pleasure class. Naturally, you cannot really evaluate it from still pictures, but the main purpose of this is to give you some insight on some of the different categories that we're going to use and also how you would use these to build a potential set of oral reasons. So the various categories we're going to look at and use in evaluating Western Pleasure horses include first their functional correctness, are they meeting the requirements of the class, following the rules, the different regulations of the class, and we'll go through some each of these in a few more minutes. Another area is their quality of movement, and this is probably one of the most important. I would say both functional correctness and quality of movement are the two most important ones. In quality of movement, are we looking, we're looking to see if they're performing the gates according to the standards that are described for what the class is. Some other things we're going to use to evaluate them on are their attitude, meaning how responsive are the, is the horse to the rider's cues. Uh, their general mannerisms. I use kind of a, a phrase in a lot of classes of autopilot, meaning that the horse looks like he's magically doing things on his own and is extremely responsive to the rider without the rider having to do very much to cue and ask the horse to do a variety of different things. Headset and head carriage are important aspects of the class, but we really do not want to overemphasize it. Over the years, headset and head carriage has probably had a lot of controversy with it, and for the most part, it's pretty much taking care of itself. However, you do need to be, avail be familiar with the difference between headset and head carriage, and we'll talk about that and show you some illustrations of that as we move through the presentation. Manners also is another area, looking at their mouth, their ears, their tail. Are they quiet? Are they positive? Are they grumpy? Are they mad? So those are all things that we'll look and evaluate the overall manners of a horse. All right, to talk just a little bit about headset and head carriage, and again, I don't want to put too, too much emphasis on it, but remember, head carriage is basically, do they carry their head up and down? Does the neck should be parallel or slightly above parallel to the ground? We used to use the tip of the ears um, in relationship to the horse's withers. It's gone through a lot of changes, and most of the time, if a horse is a good mover and going at a correct pace, uh, the headset and head carriage more or less take care of themselves. But remember, head carriage is how they carry, the, they carry their head up or down. Head set is how they set their nose, in front of, behind the vertical, or up and down. So slightly in front of the vertical or up and down really is just fine. We really don't want them to set their nose behind the vertical. So be sure you know the difference of head carriage and head set and use those for correct terminology. All right, here's a few illustrations of some different head positions, and again, we're not going to spend an overabundance of time on this. But acceptable head carriage is this. It could even be a little bit lower than that. And remember, head carriage and head set, we're carrying the head up and down, we're setting the nose in and out. Here is what we consider a high, carriage, high head carriage where it is quite elevated. In the Western Pleasure class, this head would be carried too high. Some of the horsemanship riders, they do carry their head higher, but in this presentation, we're really addressing um, Western Pleasure. In C over here, the head carriage is too low. Okay, We're looking at this up and down, and the tip of the ears would really be below the point of his wither, so he is carrying his head too low. This illustration shows a head, head um, set looking at the flexion of the nose, and this nose is going to be behind the vertical, so that would be a negative. Too far in front of the vertical is this, and we want the nose bumped out a little bit. This is excessively rooting his nose, and so this would be a negative where his headset is too far in front, or excuse me, yes, his headset is too far in front of the vertical. So here's a couple horses to look at um, as far as headset and head carriage. The horse over here is a very fine head carriage and headset. Uh, the head's very level. It's in a very natural position. The nose is bumped out just a tad, um, not behind the vertical. So both this horse's headset and head carriage is just fine. This horse, if he would remain this way throughout the class, you should see that his head carriage, if we look at this line here, is too low. If he's just walking many times, we don't really aren't we are not really that concerned about it. If he remains there through the jog and the lope, then we really would would take this into consideration in our evaluation of this horse. His head set, where he sets his nose, is just fine, but he is carrying his head at this way gate. I believe it's at the walk of being too low, lower than what we would like. A couple other examples of headset and head carriage. The carriage of this horse is just fine. 
this horse has a head set that is more nearly perpendicular, which is just fine. He's not behind the vertical. Up and down where he is is just fine. This is an Arabian type horse, and so his frame is going to be just slightly different to show you some differences. His head carriage is still okay. He carries his head with more of an arc. His head set is a little bit slightly behind the vertical, which is something you might see in Arabians, but I still would prefer the head set to be a little bit more up and down. Next, we also have to evaluate functional correctness. Are they doing the correct gates? Are they doing the classes it's prescribed by the association? So the requirements, the rules, and regulations of the class. So a functionally correct horse basically is going to travel at the, whatever the gait is called at a walk or jog or lope. It's important in Western pleasure that we use the correct terminology. So they walk, they jog, we do not trot in Western pleasure, we jog or we extend the jog, and then we lope. In English, hunt seat, we will trot and canter. But remember, in Western correct terminology, it's a jog and a lope. And also, they have to be on the correct lead. One of the first things I do when I judge a class and call for the lope is I glance around and make sure everyone's on the correct lead because you would be surprised at times they're not. Um, also, they have to reverse to the inside of the arena, come off the rail and, and make either a, a half circle back to the rail, or they can pivot. It really is not specified which way is correct. Also, there's a backup in the class, and so sometimes this is done on the rail, sometimes it's done in the middle of the pen, depending on however the class is conducted. Okay, another very important portion of the class is the quality of movement. Again, we can't really evaluate this from slides. We'll watch a variety of horses track and move when we want to evaluate their quality of movement. Two of the big things in the industry right now and big buzzwords when we're talking quality of movement is cadence and rhythm. Okay, Cadence is actually the accuracy of the footfall pattern. And we'll talk about and show you what the correct footfall pattern are for the, each of the different gates. And we're looking to see which horse is the most cadence. Rhythm refers to the speed of the legs. Are they slow-legged? Are they quick-legged? And so these are the kinds of phrases and kinds of terminology you'll, you'll want to use when you're um, talking and judging the Western Pleasure horses. So the walk should be a four-beat gait. You should be able to count it out as that horse walks. He should be traveling in somewhat of a medium speed. There are horses right now that are too slow, and that, as we judge, is supposed to be a criticism of the class. The jog is a two-beat diagonal gait where the right front and left hind strike the ground together, left front and right hind strike the ground, ground together. And it should be relatively slow, but it needs to be this two-beat diagonal gait. The lope is a three-beat gait where the outside hind foot strikes the ground, the diagonal legs come down, and then the inside front foot comes down, depending on what lead he is, he's on. And it should be a slow, relatively slow um, pace. However, we want to make sure that he is doing a, tr a, a true three-beat lope. Again, we can't really evaluate quality um, at on slides, but some things to, to think about and ways to look at it are number one, you're really going to address and look at the horse's legs. The top line over here, the head and neck generally will be a part, all part of the picture, okay? But you can't, the only way you can tell if this horse is truly doing the correct gates is look at the legs. One of the first things I'll do is to watch that horse jog and count one, two, one, two, is he hitting his two beat diagonals? Then go and evaluate how pretty and how the quality is. So you have to look at the legs. We're going to look at them from the bottom up, from the ground up, and from the rear forward. All right. Uh, as a horse trots, particularly when they lope, we'll talk a lot about how they use their hocks, how they drive their hocks underneath themselves and propel them forward, or the negative is to leave those hocks out too far behind them. All of this falls into a phrase that you'll see a lot and should use a lot of self-carriage. We're looking to see what, what horse carries himself the best and which horse has the most self-carriage. Is he driving with his hocks? Is he hitting his two-beat diagonals? Is he truly doing that three-beat lope? Some other things as far as quality of movement, we're looking for a horse that's relatively relatively collected. Is he pulled up underneath himself or is he very, very strung out? One old horseman, his definition of collection was the imprisonment of a horse's head between the rider's hands and his legs. And you'll hear some people talk about a pleasure horse acting as a ballerina where everything comes and it looks like he's lifting from the center, lifting up from the back, and that's also going to be a horse that is relatively well collected. Impulsion and drive from the hawk, this talks about also how they push and, and looking at those horses, how they use themselves from behind. 
The length of the stride is another important aspect of this. Um, we'll talk a lot of big length of stride in the hunt seat horses, but also in our western horses, we want it to be an equal distance of here and here on the inside and the outside, which makes him for a better quality of mover, which also ensures that he's probably a sounder horse as he's going down the rail. So we will look at their length of stride. Cadence we already talked about is um, the way the footfall pattern and how correct he is in that aspect. A symmetrical stride that they're even on both sides is also another element. Quality of movement, again, we're not really going to be able to look at this, but we'll look for a drive of the hawk. We'll also look through the shoulder and how those horses are flat and reach out. This horse, um, as you can see, is very flat in his front leg, and so that is a very much of a positive. You think that you don't want to look to see the bottom of the horse's foot very much. If he's flippy in front, flippy with his feet, he's going to flex those ankles a lot more. And we want the horse to just kind of swing those legs out forward without a lot of animation and flexion. Okay, attitude's another one. We'll look to see how responsive they are. Are they smooth? Do they have prompt gait transitions? Are they a positive horse? Do they reverse and back? All of these things are they look very, very willful when they do all of those things. Mannerisms also is important. Do they look straight for the bridle? Are they willing to perform? Uh, do they chomp at the bit? Are they up and down with their head? All of those types of things are, are things to look at and address in mannerisms. In Western Pleasure, um, bit contact and the length of rain is somewhat of a factor. Uh, you'll see some variation and some differences of it. The Western Pleasure horse should travel on a reasonably loose rein um, and have very light contact. You will see differences of style with some of the bit contact, and I think I have a few pictures here, of ways that different people will present their horses. Um, this horse here is a very light rein contact. Uh, it's fine. His head carriage is fine. It's not. It could be longer, but it's showing that he can go on a reasonably loose rein with a little bit of a drape. This horse's head set is a little bit different. He's more up and down with the vertical. He's been being ridden with a little bit more drape of a rein, and provided that he can perform fine, this rein length is okay. This horse down here, I know the picture's not very good, but it's a picture of a horse that really has is ridden on quite a bit tighter rein. She's riding with contact on that horse, and that would be a negative on her. We would really like to see a little bit more drape of rein. Probably on this horse up here is probably um, the minimum that we would really ideally like to see. If you look down here at the black horse, he's probably the one being ridden on the most rein, on um, the loosest rein. And we'll talk about giving credit to high degree of difficulty or increasing degree of difficulty. And if this horse can perform on a loose rein at a high level and go through the class um, correctly, then you're probably going to award him um, some credit for being able to do it that way because it is a very high degree of difficulty to be able to form and go through the class on this much length of rein. If this horse is a runoff and doesn't stay collected, then his rein length is going to be a negative. Okay. This horse, particular horse, is a sidebar. I'll tell you, could do this. This is Harley D. Zipped, and he probably has more world championships and pleasure points than any horse that there's ever been. So he obviously can perform on a rein length of, of that type. Um, if I was a judge and I had a horse walk in the pen like this, I'd kind of look at him twice and say, okay, um, I'm going to assume you're really good, and I'm going to make sure that, that, that you can perform up to the level of what you first indicate and show me that you can. So those are just some things about judging um, the Western Pleasure class and different criteria that hopefully you can use and put together as we're, we're designing the class or uh, we're evaluating classes and look to go, do some reasons on them.